Hey everybody, it's Lon Seibin. and I love my Steam Deck for a whole host of reasons, and one of them is just how impressive Valve Steam OS is. Steam OS is a Linux-based operating system, it's not Windows, yet it can run a vast majority of Windows games quite well on this limited hardware. It's amazing the amount of work that Valve has put into it, and a lot of the compatibility layers are available for other Linux distributions. And the other day, we reviewed this laptop from Asus. This is their Strix G16, and this was on sale during the Amazon Prime Day. And one of the cool things about this laptop is how easy it is to upgrade its storage and memory. I'll get to why we're talking about this in a second here. So if I just flick this over to the left and pull down, I can get into this thing and start upgrading the RAM or the storage. And I've got an extra storage slot here. And I thought, you know what, before I send this laptop back, it might be fun to run Linux games or do some Linux gaming with Windows games on this laptop. And I went around looking to see what everyone's running these days. And one of the things that continually comes up in my research is a Linux distribution called Bazite. And this distro is designed for gaming. They've optimized the entire experience here to make games run great, allegedly, on desktop and laptop and handheld hardware. So I thought, hey, why don't we occupy that storage slot on our Asus here and take Bazite out for a spin and see how it works, just because I'm curious about it. I've never played with Bazite before, and I think many of you haven't either, so it might be fun to explore this together, which is exactly what we're going to do in just a second. Now, I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that the laptop here is on loan from Asus. When we're done with this, it goes back to them. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and take a look at how Bazite might run on this laptop. So to begin, we're going to install a Samsung 1TB NVMe that I bought during the Prime Day sale. We're just going to slide this guy right in here. And then it looks like I just turned this thing, and that will lock it into place. So we've got that engaged. And I think I've got room here for a heat sink. So we're going to stick this on too, just to give it a little bit of thermal protection. Hopefully the case will come back down on it there. And now that we've got that installed, we can get Bazite going here. So let's get the case put back on here, nice and clicked in. And now we're going to go to Bazite.gg and they've got a big download button here, which we're going to push. And if we scroll down here, we tell it what kind of hardware we're using. So it looks like they've got some specific installs for specific hardware. So for example, we have Asus laptops here as an option, which is good to see, but you could also just install it on a generic desktop or home theater PC or other laptop. So select which one works best for you. There might be some compatibility issues depending on what you're installing it on, but uh, why not give it a shot? It might be kind of fun to play with. So we're gonna hit Asus laptop here. Our GPU in this is an NVIDIA RTX 5060, so I'm going to select the NVIDIA option. For the desktop, I'm going to pick KDE because that's close to what Steam OS has. I'm sure some of you have different opinions, but that's what I'm gonna choose. And then for the Steam gaming mode, we're going to have it go into the traditional desktop experience, partly because this is a computer and not a handheld, but also there's a warning on screen that says there are some issues when you boot directly into the Steam gaming mode. So we're going to stick with a desktop environment, but of course the games should run just like they would on the Windows side, presumably. And we have two options here for downloading. I'm going to pick the uh, top one here, but it looks like they now have a live version where you can test this before you do any type of installation. But let's go with the install option because this one is not listed as a beta. And I'm gonna download this, it'll take a little bit of time, and when it's done, we'll pick it up on the next step. All right, so we are done with our download here. I've got the Asus NVIDIA Open Stable version here. It comes in at about eight gigabytes in size. The next step is we need to burn a USB drive so that we can boot up our laptop with the installer. I would recommend a 16 gigabyte USB drive just to be safe. I've got an SSD plugged into this computer which should speed up the install process and the flashing process. And to make the drive, I like to use an app called Bellina Etcher. And this is very easy to use. It works across multiple platforms. In fact, I'm on the Mac right now, but it'll look and feel the same on Windows or Linux. I'm gonna go here and flash from file. I'm gonna select that file that we downloaded and click on open. I'm going to select my target here. And this is my, my big SSD. This is overkill, um, but we're going to run it to this SSD that I don't have anything else on. This will erase whatever you are writing to. So be sure to have a drive that you can sacrifice for this. You can of course format it to do something else later, 
but you will erase it when you run this process. And I'm going to click on Flash, and I will say, yes, I'm sure. It's going to ask for my password, which I'm going to type in for uh, permissions, and then it's going to write out our operating system. You can see how fast this is going because we are using an SSD. If you've got a USB stick, this will go a little bit slower. Uh, so it'll write it out, it's going to validate it, and when it's done, we can take that drive and plug it into this Windows computer, soon to be a Linux computer, and boot up Bazite's installer. So let's let this finish up and we'll pick it up from there. All right, so I've got the drive now plugged into our Asus laptop here. I'm gonna hold down the escape key and power things on. If you hold down the escape key while it's booting up, it'll pull up the boot menu, which will allow you to boot off of this drive versus the internal Windows drive. So we're gonna let this do its thing here. It plays its little song in the BIOS, and then uh, we can let go of the escape key. And what I'm gonna do here is select the UEFI BIOS on the Hynix drive, which is what I just plugged into it, and that should get us going. So what we're gonna do is it looks like we can test this media and install Bazite, which is what I want to do. So I'm gonna select the default option. The screen is a little dim here. Let me see if I can get it a little brighter, maybe not, um, but I will tell you what I'm seeing here on screen. And so what we're gonna do now is boot off of this drive. I'm coming into this fresh, so I haven't run this before, so I don't know what to expect, but hopefully it'll be relatively easy to figure out. And this is the kind of stuff we typically see when we're booting up a Linux distribution. And right now it's going through a media check. I might fast forward through some of this if it's getting a little long here. All right, so we're starting things off here. We've got a bunch of options for our language. I'm going to select the default, which is English, which also happens to be my language. It's now asking me to set a uh, disk selection for where my installation is going to go. And what I'm gonna do is select that drive that we just installed on here. So I'm going to click on that. I'm gonna leave it on automatic here. So we're gonna keep things super simple. So I'm gonna click on done. So we've got that set. Uh, the administrator Bazite will be created. I could probably go in and select a different username. So I'm just gonna give it my name so I can remember what it is. And then I'm going to type in a password now so that I can remember how to get into my computer when I do it. So we're good there. And now what we're gonna do is click on done and done again, which will set the password. And I think otherwise we're good to go. So let's click on begin installation. And what this is going to do is automatically partition that extra drive and get things installed. They do have instructions on the Bazite website for partitioning your existing Windows drive and being able to uh, basically run it alongside it on the same drive. My preference with having multiple operating systems is to boot them off their own drives, which makes it a lot simpler in my opinion. So that is what we're doing here, but it is possible to repartition your Windows drive and do it that way. So it looks like this is gonna take a little bit of time here, so why don't we let it do its thing, and I'll be back when we're on to the next step. All right, the installation finished, but unfortunately I was getting errors when I tried to boot off of the drive. So what I'm doing now is going into the BIOS screen of the laptop here and going over to Secure Boot. Right now, Secure Boot is enabled. I'm going to disable it, and I have a feeling that is going to fix our issue here. So why don't we save changes and exit? And this will be something that might pop up on just about any Windows laptop that you use because most have Secure Boot enabled. So now we're going to go back through the boot screen here and let's go into Grub. And it looks like we are now booting from this drive. Now, if you hold down the Escape key, you can switch to the other drive. You can also have in your BIOS a priority as to which drive gets booted first. So those are all things that you can set up here. But it looks like now we've got Bazite loading for the first time. So why don't we let it do its thing, and when it's done, we'll come back and see what our next step is. All right, so we are on the Bazite desktop now. I was finally able to adjust the screen brightness. I can use the keys here to do it. The problem, though, is that even at 100%, this doesn't look as bright as it does under Windows. So I'll need to poke around with that a little bit more. But I've got Steam already pre-installed, so my next step here is to get my Steam account attached. We're going to run a benchmark on Cyberpunk 2077 after I get everything installed and we'll see how well it runs and then we'll do some other things as well. All right, so here we are running the Cyberpunk benchmark and I did run this very same benchmark with the same settings on the Windows side, so we'll compare numbers when it finishes up here. I will say that I'm noticing a bit of a performance reduction, maybe 30 or 40 frames per second or so versus what I saw on the Windows side. 
and of course the screen is running a bit dimmer. So here we got an average frame rate of 135.97. I did go with the ray tracing ultra settings here, which isn't bad given what we're uh, running here, but in Windows I got a score of 176.08 frames per second with the very same settings. Now I have seen a number of YouTube channels and publications talking about how under certain circumstances Bazide or another Linux OS can run these games better than Windows. I do believe that, but I think you have to have all of the drivers and all the system components optimized for that distribution to get that bump in performance. Here, out of the box, this is running at a lower frame rate than Windows is with a few other issues that are cropping up for me. One that I noticed is that as I'm typing on the keyboard, it's sometimes missing keystrokes, so I have to adjust some keyboard settings somewhere, I think. Additionally, I can't get the bottom light here to light up at all, and there are more limited options for the keyboard backlighting in Bazite at the moment as well. So there are some things that you're giving up here. One of them, at least on the surface, uh, is giving up some performance. But let me dive a little bit deeper into this and see what else we can do with Bazite. All right, so now I have it connected directly to my capture hardware. They include another app in the distribution here called Lutris, which allows you to load up games from other platforms. So for example, I've got the Epic Game Store here attached to my app along with GOG, good old games, and I have installed a few games here, but unfortunately things have not been working very well. So for example, I had purchased Shenmue 3 on the Epic Game Store a number of years ago. I did install it, or at least I thought I did. It showed up here as something that I can select, but when I click on play, it goes and summons the Epic Game Store launcher. It verifies an update. That disappears, and then everything just kind of hangs here for a while, and then the game doesn't load at all. So I haven't had much luck getting Epic Games working on here, although I'm sure I could point it perhaps at the exec executable to get it up and running. But so far, my experiences here have not been great getting non-Steam games to work. Um, so I'll let this finish up here. We'll take a look at a GOG game, and then we'll go back to Steam. But I did have better luck with my GOG library. So here I installed Space Quest IV, a classic from like 30 plus years ago. And if I go ahead here and click play, it will summon Scum VM. I'm assuming that was what GOG has this game run in. And it boots up very quickly. The voice works. All of the uh, <laughs> Sound Blaster emulated audio is working, including voice. So all is good here. So this stuff worked, but the Epic Game Store running more modern games did not. But I'm finding a lot of my Steam games are running just fine on this hardware. Pretty much anything that runs well on the Steam Deck is running well here. But again, we've got the dimmer display and there's also a performance impact. So this game uh, generally runs over 100 frames per second on Windows at ultra settings at 1080p all the time. Here, as you can see, we are below 100 frames per second. We're only in the 70-ish range, which is still pretty good, but we're seeing basically a 30 to 40 frames per second performance gap between the Linux uh, operating system here and Windows with the same game at the same settings on the same hardware. So it's clear we're not fully optimized for this combination of hardware, and I think that's one of the challenges when you're trying to get Linux distros to work with gaming laptops, because there are a lot of different configurations. Manufacturers release a number of different gaming laptops every year. Asus has got a number of different SKUs, of course, with all sorts of different configuration options. And the companies spend a lot of time optimizing performance on these gaming laptops for Windows with all the extra hardware and all the other things that they're doing. Uh, those optimizations just aren't coming through here because it doesn't look like Asus spends as much time getting Linux optimized as they do on the Windows side. So I think if we started seeing more partnerships between computer manufacturers and Bazite or maybe other Linux distros, we might see better performance here. But as far as I can tell right now, there is a performance issue here. There are hardware compatibility issues. It does run, but again, my display is dim. My keyboard doesn't work. The lighting underneath the thing here doesn't work properly. There's just a lot of things that aren't working as well as I would like them to. So I think we still have a ways to go before Linux gaming becomes as turnkey as Windows might on the same hardware. There are examples of Linux working great on handhelds where you've got a very consistent hardware configuration from one individual device to the next, but I do think gaming laptops are going to be a lot more difficult. That said, 
Linux has come a long way. We wouldn't have been able to do this a couple of years ago and get a game running this well, especially a game that wasn't written for Linux. So there have been some major improvements here. I think we'll continue to see them. But right now, I think if you have a gaming laptop and we're curious about installing Bazite, it's probably not going to be a big game changer for you. And in many cases, like mine here, uh, you will probably see a performance impact. I am sure a lot of you will have comments about this, so leave them down in the comment thread. I wanted to do kind of a turnkey installation without doing a lot of extra tweaks here. I'm sure if we spent a lot of time, we could get this laptop running better with Bazite, but that's not the point. The point is that this computer out of the box performed better than it did with Bazite Linux out of the box. And that was what I wanted to test out here. So let me know down in the comments section what I'm doing wrong here. And I will try to do a follow-up in the near future. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching.